Hey guys, so about a month ago, we did a video where we repotted some Venus flytraps and I showed you how to divide them. In that video, I took some leaf pullings. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the leaf pullings and how they're coming along and tell you a little bit more about their care and what to expect from them. So let's get started. Like I said a month ago, we took these leaf pullings from a, an adult Venus flytrap like this. Um, and it happened by mistake because I wasn't intentionally trying to do leaf pullings. What happens when I was splitting up the plant is that as you divide the plants up, sometimes you pull a little bit too hard and you pull a leaf off. Now the important thing when you do a leaf pulling to be successful like these is that when you do the leaf pulling, there has to be some white bit at the end. That white bit is the rhizome. And the rhizome is where the energy is actually stored in a Venus flytrap. So when you do leaf pulling, it has to have a rhizome in it and you have to obviously put it pretty deep into the pot. And with all of that together, the rhizome will then turn into some roots and create some new tiny little plants like we now have in our little Venus flytrap pulling pot. Now this has taken, like I said, about a month and not all of the pullings have taken. We have, what is that? One, two, three or four or so um, little plant that's coming up and there's what is that? Two pullings that didn't take. So it generally is about a 50-50 chance that your pullings will or won't make it. But you know, if you're doing them by mistake, like ours, you know, might as well just chuck them in a pot and get some more Venus flytraps out of it, right? So let me talk to you guys a little bit more about their care. I just did a cut expecting to move somewhere, but I forgot that there's no way for me to record anymore because it's so hot and sunny and noisy. So I have to stay in the same spot. But anyway, let me tell you about their care. I put this pot of pullings on the flood table, as you guys hopefully remember. I put them all down together, even the little plants that were divided, like the ones that weren't pullings, just divisions. We put them on this table all together at the exact same time. And their care was the same as the adult, this adult Venus flytrap. They literally grow right next to each other. What that means is that I'm not doing anything different for them, especially because they're just typical Venus flytraps, which means that they aren't a cultivar, they're just ones you can find at like the big box store or whatever. You don't have to give them anything special. I literally put them on the table, give them the water like you're meant to do, let them have their full bright sunlight, and that is genuinely it. And that's how we now have all these little sprouts coming up. So what happens is that people, when they do a pulling or they get little divisions or something, they will over care for the plants and this is something that i've talked about a couple times with you know cannabis plants in general is that people tend to over care for them and that kills them off people would take their little pullings and they would put a plastic bag on them or keep them somewhere very humid uh, and give them like less light because they think that you give them too much light is going to kill the plants off or something it doesn't make much sense to me because i know the plants but to them i guess i can see where they're coming from but what happens in those cases when you give the plant, then most of the time it's that they give them too much humidity. When you give the plant too much humidity, that is when they rot away because there is no fresh air coming in and no old air coming out. There's no air movement. And that means that the, the spores from mold can grow, algae can grow, fungus can grow, all that type of stuff. It makes it much easier for them to grow and take over the pot and obviously the plant because if you guys can tell from this pot, the top of the trap dies off, the green bit dies off. That is why it is so important that you have the rhizome because the rhizome is actually where the energy is stored, like I said, that is where the growth will come from. So if you put this pot in a plastic bag and keep it very, very humid like that, the top bit that rots away will rot away and all the fungus and mold and growth stuff will grow on that dead bit and take over the entire pot and the rest of the plant and kill off any potential chance that you have of getting some little sprouts. So you have to be very, very careful. Obviously, if it is very dry where you stay, you might wanna give them a little bit more humidity. You might wanna be a little bit more careful with it. But if you can grow a normal Venus flytrap, a healthy adult Venus flytrap, you need to put your pullings right next to it, unless it is a cultivar because they're a little bit more tricky. 
Now that is essentially it guys, like I said, we have sprouts here, all the other ones are still alive and growing, they're all super happy, like I said, they're just on the water table, I water them all the time, they are always sit in water, they get full sunlight, they get cold and warmth of the days, you know, like normal, and we have success with them. Now, I'm not going to say it is a full um, success just yet, because I am doing this video because they have just started to come up and I've just noticed them. So I'm showing you guys an update video a month later because they're very slow. There is still the possibility that these little sprouts, that these little sprouts here are going to die off too because Venus flat traps and cannabis plants in general can be pretty temperamental. And there's no real way to prevent them from dying off. As long as you're giving them the right care and you're doing everything correctly like I just explained, if you just leave them outside and give them what they need, they should come right. But don't put all of your eggs into one basket is what I'm trying to say. They can still die off because they're, they're just weird, man. Hopefully in another month's time, we will actually have little plantlets growing and I'll do another update video then. So make sure that you do subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on that update video. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about cultivars because like I said, cultivars are a little bit different than our typical Venus flat trap like this one here this is just a typical venus flower trap i'm actually letting them flower this time because i want to show you guys how to pollinate them and collect seeds and stuff so if you are interested to see venus flower trap pollination and their seeds and all that type of stuff make sure to subscribe to the channel too but anyway let us talk about the cultivars when you get a venus flower trap cultivar they've been bred for a reason right it's artificial selection humans have modified them in whatever way just like humans over time have artificially bred bananas and strawberries and dogs and different breeds of cattle. It's the same type of deal. We choose specific traits that we want. We make those traits that we want breed with other plants that have the same traits so that the offspring can have more or better versions of those traits. And that is the same with Venus flytraps. What that means is that all of your baby Venus flytraps that you get are going to be very, very similar or they should actually be exact clones if you're doing leaf pullings. Now that's all good and well, but what happens in artificial selection and breeding and in some cases genetic modification through chemicals is that the plants become weak. They genuinely do become weak, especially if the cultivar didn't come from seed, if they literally come from chemicals and artificial selection and inbreeding and stuff like that. It does make the plants a little bit weaker. And that is very evident, for example, in the Venus flat traps, such as Venus flat trap. Alien, that I found that they rot away very easily. Some of the small ones, like Kudo, I think, as well. Generally, the ones that are less, less robust looking, looking, the ones that don't have very big traps, wide open traps that look very strong and healthy, like a typical Venus flat trap, the ones that don't really look like this, those ones are generally the ones that have been inbred the most or most selected for specific traits. And those guys are the ones that are oftentimes weaker. So those ones, you do need to be more careful with them. When you take a leaf pulling, for example, you're gonna have to look after the leaf pulling much, much more. In that case, I would suggest that you put a plastic bag over it, but keep the bag open at the top. You want it just so you can raise the humidity, but you don't want it to be like 100% humidity because they will rot away, like I said, and then the fungus will set in and the plant will just die anyway. So it becomes much more difficult with those type of plants. And in those cases too, you might want to watch out on the sunlight because it makes those cultivars at leaf pulling a little bit weak. And if you give them too much bright direct sun, which they do love and they do need, if you give it to them immediately after being shocked, they can actually get damaged. It will cause the leaf to go black and die, which is normal. That's what happens with these guys too. They just go black and die after shock and the bright sunlight, it just gets them. It's normal. But these guys are more resilient compared to those ones. So you would have to lower the bright intensity of the light. You would have to put them somewhere bright but shaded and give them some time until you start noticing little babies coming out. When you start noticing babies coming out with the cultivars, at that time, you can slowly open up the package, you know, for the humidity more and more and more until the point that the humidity isn't actually doing anything because the packet is so open. And from there, 
And then you can take the plant and slowly acclimate it to more sunlight as you would do with the normal Venus flytrap that you get from Coles, I mean, not Coles, from the Home Depot or the big box stores, those ones that are light starved. You slowly acclimate them, right? You know that? You do the same with your cultivar Venus flytrap pullings. So you do need to be careful with those guys, but otherwise the process is the same. It is pretty simple. And yeah, Venus flytraps are much easier than most carnivorous plants. So do bear that in mind, guys. So yeah, I just wanted to do this quick update for you guys, talk a little bit more about them and their care. Really not much in this video as well, but I think that you guys will be very happy to see their progress. And hopefully if you guys did some leaf pullings with, or with me, your leaf pullings should be in the same position if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, because we're going into spring and summer now. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you did the pullings at the wrong time. <laughs> the best time to do pullings or divisions of you know, most cannabis plants is midwinter to early spring, because that is when the plant starts growing again. You don't really wanna do it in the middle of summer, but you can, um, but generally at the end of summer, early like, like autumn or fall, if you're American, that's the worst time to do it. Um, so hopefully your plants still make it. I don't think they will. And I'm sorry if that happened, but don't worry, it will come right to the next season when you do it again. So that's another little update video for you guys on these guys. I know lots of you guys were very, very happy to see them and look at their progress and a few people subscribed for this specific video. Here's your video guys. So if you did enjoy the video, if you find it informative, please leave a like, a sound. Like, all, all us YouTubers, we say the same things, eh? It's funny. But yeah, the likes does help the channel out, so please, leave a like. If you subscribe if you enjoy the videos and you like these type of content. Comments if you have any questions. You can email me, Facebook Messenger me, or Instagram me. I'm happy to help you with anything. And also, in the comments, let me know what type of videos you guys want to see. Let me know what topic you want me to do a video on. I'm very happy to choose those topics which I think will be helpful for everyone and I'll do a video on them for you. So don't forget that guys. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.